Hey everyone, although indicators like Universal Indicator are great, we're going to be going through a practical where we prepare our own natural indicator from Red Cabbage. To do this, we'll go through the aim, equipment and safety risks, method, results and discussion of this practical. So let's get started with the aim. Our aim in this experiment is to prepare an indicator from Red Cabbage and use this indicator to identify acids and bases. In other words, we're making an indicator and seeing what an indicator can tell us about acids and bases. There are many things we could make our indicator from, like flower petals, tea and fruit, but we're going to be using red cabbage. Now, the equipment we're going to need for this experiment includes red cabbage, a knife, a chopping board, a kettle for hot water, a strainer, 3 milliliters of 0.25 mole sodium hydroxide, 3 milliliters of 0.25 mole hydrochloric acid, distilled water, 3 test tubes, a 500 milliliter beaker, a 250 milliliter beaker, a stirring rod, and plastic pipettes. You may hear milliliter being called centimeters cubed, and they are equal units, but for this video, we'll continue to use milliliters. So, from our experiment, we can see a few hazards, risks, and precautions we can take to make sure that we're performing this experiment safely. The main hazards here are using sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, hot water, and a knife. The risk of using sodium hydroxide is that it can irritate eyes and can corrode your skin. The safety precaution we can take here is to wear safety glasses and a lab coat to protect our eyes and skin. Hydrochloric acid has pretty much the same risks and safety precautions in this experiment. Now onto hot water. The risk of using hot water from a kettle is that it can burn your skin. Once again, our safety precaution is to wear a lab coat to protect our skin. We should also keep the kettle in the centre of the lab bench to reduce the chance of the hot water spilling. Our last hazard is the knife, because it could cut or damage our bodies. As a safety precaution, keep hands away from the blade and use a chopping board for a flat, stable surface. So, now that we've considered the hazards, risks and precautions, we can get into the method. Slice the leaves of red cabbage into small pieces and place these pieces into a 500ml beaker. Boil the kettle with distilled water. Once the water has boiled, pour around 200ml of hot water into the 500ml beaker, ensuring the pieces of red cabbage are covered. Wait until the water turns a dark purple colour. Allow the mixture to cool and then strain the mixture, pouring the liquid into a new 250ml beaker. This is the indicator solution. These steps here from 1 to 4 are all about preparing the indicator, but we still need to actually use the indicator to test the properties of acids and bases. So, continuing with our method, use a pipette to place 3 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, 3 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, and 3 milliliters of distilled water into separate test tubes. Add several drops of the purple indicator into each of the test tubes, ensuring that a distinct color can be seen. Finally, record the colour of each test tube. In these final three steps, we're testing how our natural indicator works with a strong base, strong acid and neutral substance to see how our indicator identifies acids and bases. But what would our results be from testing these substances with our red cabbage indicator? Well, the test tube with the indicator and HCl would be red. Meanwhile, the test tube with the indicator and water would be purple. And finally, the test tube with sodium hydroxide and the indicator would be green. So, let's analyse and talk about these results, focusing on validity, reliability and accuracy. The validity of our experiment depends on whether we fulfilled the aim. We did make an indicator, so the first part of the aim was fulfilled. Also, our red cabbage indicator was red in acidic conditions, purple in neutral conditions and green in basic conditions. This means the red cabbage indicator can distinguish between acidic, neutral and basic solutions. So the second part of the aim was fulfilled and the experiment was valid. If we wanted further evidence that indicators undergo reversible reactions, we could add some indicator to an acidic solution and continuously add sodium hydroxide to make it more basic. Over time, we should see the equilibrium shifting and changing colour as a result of the indicator's reversible reaction. 
Something to note is that the red cabbage indicator isn't so great at distinguishing between stronger and weaker acidic solutions in particular. At pHs between 2 and 5, the red cabbage indicator is a reddy pink colour and it's a little hard to tell what the exact pH is. OK, now on to reliability, which is whether our results were consistent. If we only ran through this method once, our results wouldn't be reliable because we wouldn't be sure that the red cabbage indicator always turns red in acidic solutions, for example. To make sure that this is the case, we need to repeat the experiment at least three times to make sure we get the same results. Our final thing to consider is accuracy, which is how close our results are to the true values, or what we should be getting. To make sure our results are accurate, we could research the red cabbage indicator and make sure that our colour changes line up. But that's it for this one. We aimed to make a natural indicator using red cabbage and then test this natural indicator in acidic, neutral and basic solutions. The hazards we had to consider included using sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, hot water and a knife. But all in all, it was a pretty valid experiment, was able to distinguish between acidic, neutral and basic solutions. Alright, that's it from me for this one. See you next time.